everybody, John McClellan here, ATX Hot Sauce, atxhotsauce.com. Check us out online and subscribe below if you like our video. Got tons of other videos on there. Today I'm making one of my absolutely favorite sauces. It's called the Juice. Won multiple awards here in Austin at the Austin Chronicle Hot Sauce Festival last year, this year. Uh, it blends pineapple, coconut, garlic, onion, ginger, turmeric, cardamom, and habaneros in a great fermentation. I'm gonna show you how to make it today. All right, let's get to making this hot sauce. I like to put my fruit, not the peppers, but the fruit fruit, like the pineapple at the very bottom. Uh, and this recipe, and when we make them at the kitchen, we use uh, five to six gallon uh, buckets to create our sauces, and we'll put two whole pineapples in there. Today, we're not gonna need that many. We're only gonna need about, uh, about 12 ounces of pineapple, but I'm gonna get this thing cut up. A little just check, if you wanna get the top off, just twist it off. Another thing you can do with this, and I'm gonna insert a video or uh, a picture here to show you what you can do with this after a couple of years. Put this with a couple of toothpicks in it, a little bit of water, let it root out, then plant it in a planter for your house. And uh, check out the picture here. Uh, that's mine, two years, actually put a pineapple out recently, but you gotta be patient with it. We'll put that aside. Don't worry about the core, you can keep the core in there. Uh, and we are going to need about 32 ounces of that. Always weigh everything. You want your rest to be, recipes to be consistent. 12 ounces actually is what we want here. Eh, it's a little bit over 13 and a half, but that'll work. All right, now we want to get our fruit cut up pretty good, right? Big chunks, are not gonna, they're gonna take up a lot of room. Careful with a sharp knife. Pineapples can be slippery. And you don't want to take a finger off. Okay. Next, we're gonna add the coconut in here. Coconut is three and a half ounces of coconut. So let's stir this out. There we go, that's actually the perfect amount there. Get that loaded in. All right, we're gonna do three ounces of garlic. There we go. Three ounces of garlic there. We're gonna put those in whole. And we've got some turmeric. Now I like to wash this off, so I'm gonna wash it off real quick. Hold on one second. All right, the reason we add the turmeric, a lot of it's for color, it gives it a great taste too. But you can see the color on the sauce, that's a lot of it comes from this turmeric. So I don't like to peel my turmeric, I just like to wash it really, really well. You peel it, you take all those good bacteria off. Put into smaller pieces. All right. Next, we've got some ginger. Ginger, we're gonna need about one ounce of that. It's a little too much. About one ounce right there. This has already been washed and ready to go. We're gonna cut this in little guy pieces too. Get that thrown in there. Next, we have a little bit of cardamom. We're gonna do about 0.5 ounces of cardamom. These are whole cardamom seeds. They give such a great flavor on them. All right. Next, habaneros. Now, I do, do recommend wearing gloves. I didn't need gloves until this point, but I thought I'd put them on anyway. Uh, let's get these chopped up. Make sure if you see any ones like these that have a little discoloration on it, maybe a little bit of mold or a little mushy, those are the ones you wanna throw away, right? You don't wanna be using those. Well, let's get these chopped up. Now, here's an important part of fermentation. Some people are like, well, why don't you just throw the whole thing in there? Well, you wanna chop it up because if you don't chop it up, the brine that we're gonna put in in a few minutes can never get inside, so it has air pockets inside where mold can develop. So you wanna chop these up fairly well, and you just wanna get them all opened up so that brine can go in there. Just cut them in quarters. This is gonna take a minute. All right, we've got all the habaneros in there. Push that down a little bit. Got all the pineapple, the cardamom, the garlic, uh, the ginger in there. Now we're gonna add uh, one small onion to the top of it. So you get all this yucky stuff off of it. Fun fact, the reason you cry when you cut onions is sulfuric acid. If you're serving fresh onions that are chopped, not cooked, I recommend rinsing them off under water in a colander. If you're making like a pico de gallo or something like that. All right, we've got that in there. Next, we've got to add the brine. Let me show you how that works. All right, so we're doing a wet fermentation. A lot of people are like, aren't you gonna weigh the, uh, the product 
and then put that ratio of salt into So whatever the vegetables and fruits weigh, that's the percentage of salt. Uh, we do a wet fermentation. Uh, rough chop like that, that's a mash you're thinking about. So what we do is we do three and a half percent salt to water. Now here's an easy way to do that, right? So let's do a little uh, history lesson from go back when you were in junior high, high school and you're learning about the metric system, if you did. Four liters, one liter is a thousand grams in weight of water. A thousand grams of weight in water is one liter, right? So if I have four liters here, right? And that is 4,000 grams of water. Now I want to do a three and a half percent. Well, three and a half percent of a thousand is 35. Well, times that by four, what do you get? 140. So we're going to do 140 grams of salt for this 4,000 grams or four liters of water. All right, 140 grams. We'll get that right in that water. Now let's get that peppy stirred up. Kosher salt's probably the best. Sea salt works too. Um, you know, there's some debate about this. I probably wouldn't use a uh, um, iodized salt. You know, some Himalayan sea salt might be good. I just like your straight kosher salt. You want to get that all mixed up, let it get all dissolved in there. And then we're going to pour our brine into here. All right, we got our salt dissolved in the water. Let's get it into this gallon container jar. Remember, three and a half percent of the weight of the water. We got four liters, that's 4,000 grams of water, 140 grams of salt is three and a half percent, if I did my math right. Now, when you put the brine in, you wanna get it, you wanna have a little bit of head space, not too much head space, because that oxygen get in there and that can create and promote growth of mold. So we're gonna let it sit there a little bit, put some of the bubbles out. Right. Now what's going to happen when this starts fermenting is it's going to expand. So you don't want it too far up. So about right there, maybe an inch off the top, right? Uh, next we're going to have one of my little fun things here. I'll do that. It's a little press plate. They make them in different sizes. What you can do is you can adjust this. So when you put the cap on, it holds the vegetables down below. That's why I put those onions on there to hold those down. So we'll do a little bit more. Yeah, probably about like that. Take a clean and sanitized lid. Have I used that term enough? Let me get that screwed down on there. Then we're gonna use our airlock. Now you don't need an airlock, but you'll once the fermentation process starts, you'll need to burp it at least once a day or the thing will explode. You don't want that. Probably wonder why I have the vodka here. Well, you gotta have some liquid in here. Water, probably not the best. You could put brine in here, that salt water brine. I like to put some vodka in there. Kind of like what Julia Child says, a little bit for the airlock and a little for me. Not this early. All right, we're gonna get this on here. We're gonna get it labeled. We're gonna go put it in a cool, dark place. 30 days, come back, and we're gonna make a sauce of it. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you tune in and check out for part two in about 30 to 40 days where I show you how to make the sauce for this. It's a gorgeous sauce. It's called The Juice. It's award-winning, and it's only at ATX Hot Sauce. Subscribe below and check out our web website, atxhotsauce.com.